Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is September 20th, 2024. It's durian season in Malaysia. This popular food is also known as the king of the fruits, known for its delightful taste and spiky exterior. And in the U.S., flocks of purple martin birds are migrating to South America. At sundown, they all return to their temporary roosts, a sight you must see to believe. Can our own children help us resolve conflicts such as bullying? Learn what's possible when you tap into your inner strength. A drought in Ecuador is causing blackouts throughout the country, and this time the power cuts are happening at night. And the U.S. launches an online system to simplify their passport renewal process. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. Durian, often referred to as the king of fruits, is a beloved delicacy in Malaysia. Known for its distinct aroma and spiky exterior, it offers a delightful taste and creamy texture. UNN Field Messenger Luis tells us more about this unique fruit. Hi, this is Luis reporting from Kuala Lumpur for United Network News. Natural abundance is present all year round, but at the start of the durian season in Malaysia, Mother Nature gives us the durian fruit, a spiky superfood much loved in this part of the world. Known affectionately as the king of fruits, durian is one of the most delicious and most interesting superfoods available in Malaysia. Known for having high amounts of antioxidants, collagen, vitamins and minerals, durian is also considered an excellent source of dietary fiber and potassium. Durians can be as large as a medium-sized watermelon and are usually covered in spiky husk that can make one bleed if the fruit is not handled with hair. Inside the tough, horny husk are arrows covered with creamy pulp, ranging in color from white to yellow and red. Today we are visiting fruit stalls in a suburb of Kuala Lumpur where Malaysians and tourists are excited about the start of durian season. Some would say durian tastes like a rich custard, highly flavored with almonds and a touch of cherry wine. It is a creamy combination of sweet and bitter flavors with slightly alcoholic hints. The atmosphere in the fruit stalls is filled with a sense of joy and anticipation as the scent of durian fills the air. The crowd here today is enthusiastic and relishing the chance to try different varieties of durian, including the most popular one, the tourist favorite, Musang King, for which Malaysia is world famous. Due to its high cost, durian can be a birthday gift, or a wedding gift, or a way to show off your wealth. Next time you visit Malaysia, make sure you give durian a try. You may just love it. Reporting for UNN, this is Luis. Until next time. Imagine looking up and seeing tens of thousands of birds swirling in the sky, then diving down to their roosts. This is what purple martins do every night in August as they begin their migration from North America to South America. UNN Field Messenger Sonny introduces us to a group of volunteers committed to helping purple martins complete their annual voyage. It's a cool summer night on the Nimicilla Reservoir, part of the Portage Lakes in Northeastern Ohio. We're here to witness an aerial spectacle. Masses of purple martins will soon return to their temporary roost nearby. It's a pit stop 
on their migratory journey to South America. The birds, what they do is they come here in the month of August, maybe the last week of July, and they leave around the first part of September. And what happens is in this reed, again, or these reeds, it's called a roost, they come here every night at sundown. Frank is one of many volunteers who help the Purple Martins when they stop here each year. He's also our pontoon boat captain and guide. If you drive around the Portage Lakes or anywhere really in northern Ohio, you'll see these white gourds that are on poles. Um, those are the, the nests. The, the purple martins are the only bird that really rely on humans to survive. So what we do every morning, you take scrambled eggs, no oil, no salt, no spices, no hot sauce Tito. Uh, you take just the egg and you uh, scramble it. You take some of the shell, you mash it in with it to give them some protein. Uh, and then we put it on a spoon and we shoot it in the air and they eat it right out of the air. Uh, they'll eat it or take it back to their nest to feed their young, um, but they need that. There are about 150,000 active Purple Martin colonies across North America managed by people who maintain these artificial nest sites. Events like this two-hour pontoon cruise at twilight is one of the main fundraising events for local volunteers. And now it's just about time for the Purple Martins to return. They do what is called, I think it's murmuration is the word, where they kind of fly in a, in a, a uniform pattern. They'll kind of make like a centrifuge and they'll come down extremely fast. And it's really cool. There they come. There's about 300 roosts in the country and Canada combined. So we're very lucky to have this. Sunny Galt. Reporting for United Network News. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our website is up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hi everyone, this is Leanne. And I'm Jerry. Coming to you from Tamworth, New South Wales. Hi there, this is Rick from Arizona. My name is Uchechuku Obwenebam from Igbo Tribe, Nigeria. Hi, this is Scott from Utah. I'm Annette from Agassiz, British Columbia. Hi, I'm Marcus Surzit from Manipur State, India. Real people reporting real stories from all around the world. That's what United Network News is all about. Can you clap? We had a huge flood, which some call the flood of the century. No fake news here. Our field messengers share personal experiences of what's really happening in their community. We got some nice fish right here. At UNN, you are the news. My family and I had a very good time. Take the next step. Become a UNN field messenger and share the real news with the world. In the northwest province of South Africa, I am United Network News. 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 And if it's going to be, it's up to me. It's going to be, it's up to me. If it is going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to us. Field messages, United Network News. See you next time. Our children can be our greatest teachers. By tapping into their inner strength, they show us how to overcome challenging issues in our lives. Lee Dagani is a dynamic teacher, spiritual counselor, and healer. She and her husband work with children to see beyond this realm by practicing their supernatural gifts. Today, Lee shares with us how these gifts can be used to reduce conflict, such as bullying. 
Today we're talking about empowering our children with their incredible superhuman gifts, which really, Lee, I mean, we're wired to do this naturally. Sometimes when I say superhuman, it's like, actually, that's just human. <laughs> but but we need to empower our children with this because you know how it is, you know, growing up in childhood and you get made fun of and all this kind of stuff, but, but they really are special. And, you know, we kind of have to navigate that as parents. Absolutely. And you know what's so interesting that in my program, most of the children do not want to share with others what they're doing that they can see. Mm -hmm. And and they only like to share with others that are doing it. And I, I find that very, very interesting because it's just so much is just not accepted yet, even by kids who are usually, you know, very open to this. But but we give the children tools so that they can use their gifts once they can connect to this special light. And I have a story of an adorable girl, um, Sarah, and she's one of the sensitive children that, you know, doesn't like to be around loud noises or negativity and very sensitive, very loving. And she told me in one of our sessions, she was very worried because there was going to be a family gathering. And traditionally, there were two cousins that would always fight. So one of the tools that we have is that every session, the children learn how to kind of identify anything that might be a concern for them you know, like frustration with school or a test coming up or a situation mm -hmm. like this. And we give them tools and skills so that they can energetically remove that and bring down what they want. But in her case, you know, she was ready to go a little further. So we worked on creating like a sacred space, a bubble and beaming love into the situation and to her cousins. Well. At that gathering, it was the first time there was no fighting and there has not been fighting since. And mm. that power that these children have. Now, what about bullying? Because that is a big problem and probably one of the reasons why the kids don't want to share. Absolutely. What, what happens is the child who's connecting to this light and being activated that child's energy field changes. And so bullies are no longer attracted to it. And there's no judgment, but if a child is being bullied, there's something in there that's saying, come bully me. And it could be from a past life. It could be from something that was absorbed, yeah. but working with this, in this modality and this energy changes that. And I recently had a college student who's on the spectrum and in college and doing a wonderful job, but it's very difficult for her. And after a few sessions, we had been working on that. And of course, I work on that energetically on my own to help that situation. But she was constantly bullied, even by college students. Wow. And it turned out, she said, they stopped bullying me. And they even get to the point then where they can go into that place of non-judgment and they can send love, love. to the situation. And I, I have a really quick story that I used to have a neighbor years ago who was not really happy with us for various reasons, used mm -hmm. to complain about us and would go to the board and complain about us that we had too many people coming to our house. And I was so upset by that. I was bullied. And I knew the only way to overcome that was to send him blessings. It was really hard for me. This was way, way before this work and early on in my spiritual journey. Right. But I just kept at it. And one day I got to the point where I really could feel my heart open and really feel that I was sending him blessings. I waved to him. He waved back. And I thought I was going to fall off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up moving a few months later. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's the power that we have. 
<laughs> yes. Well, we know we're in charge of our own reality. So if we don't like something, we can change that. And so this makes perfect sense to me. At a correctional facility in Indiana in the United States, a special program is bringing inmates and rescue cats together. The program lets selected inmates care for these cats for six hours a day. The cats enjoy a safe haven within the prison, enriching the lives of their caretakers while waiting to be adopted. Inmates earn a sense of purpose and responsibility by nurturing these abandoned and abused animals. They provide love and support to the cats and gain important life skills in the process. This unique bond helps rehabilitate the inmates and boosts the cat's chances of finding forever homes. This innovative program shows how compassion, kindness, and care can heal both people and animals. Past Lives is a collaborative workspace in Portland, Oregon, dedicated to supporting ex-prisoners by providing them with trade skills and job opportunities. With the guidance of founder Brandon Morlock, the organization is expanding its mission to promote renewal and empowerment within the community. The initiative evolved into a thriving hub that combines artistry and craftsmanship. Members have unlimited use of facilities like wood and metal shops, ceramics, textile, and sound studios, and a dark room, all for $200 per month. Their unique approach blends construction with artistic expression, allowing for innovative projects like custom furniture and large-scale artworks. By promoting relationships and equality, past lives transforms the lives of those involved. It creates a supportive environment where ex-prisoners can allowing them to rebuild their lives through meaningful work and mutual respect. For more information, you can visit their website at pastlives.space. Chris Vines, an 81-year-old sketch artist from Brisbane, Australia, is using his passion for art as a source of joy and therapy for others while battling the side effects of cancer treatment. Due to permanent kidney damage, he spends around 15 hours a week on dialysis in the hospital. While waiting for his treatment, Chris finds relief in creating detailed drawings despite having lost sight in one eye. He often takes requests from nurses and fellow patients. His artwork, which includes various animals like sloths and kookaburras, brings a smile and brightens the day of those around him. Renowned for his humility, Chris says drawing allows him to forget his health issues, making life feel easier and more relaxing. He understands the power of creativity in overcoming challenges and believes in sharing his art as a way to uplift others, preferring to gift his pictures to spread happiness. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Ecuador is facing blackouts due to a severe drought affecting its hydroelectric plants. Power cuts occur nightly from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., lasting two to five hours in different areas. The drought has lowered water levels and reservoirs, causing the third blackout period this year. Unlike previous daytime cuts, the night schedule aims to reduce economic disruption. However, businesses still face losses of $20 million each night. 
During blackouts, some regions have a curfew due to a state of emergency over organized crime, with increased security at essential sites like banks and fuel stations. The crisis is worsened by years of poor maintenance and investment in the electricity sector. To supplement energy needs, Ecuador is importing electricity from Colombia and leasing floating power plants from Turkey. A new report in New South Wales, Australia, warns about the danger of faulty lithium ion batteries in e-bikes, e-scooters, and other personal mobility devices. The report calls for new standard, new national standards to ensure personal mobility devices meet safety requirements. It recommends New South Wales fair trading to ban platforms like Amazon and Timu from selling non-compliant batteries. Fire agencies suggest updating building standards to address new risks of electric vehicle fires in apartment basements. So far in 2023, Fire and Rescue New South Wales reported 211 battery-related incidents, leading to 631 evacuations and 21 injuries. Starting next year, corporations could face fines up to $825,000 for non-compliance with new safety standards. Pakistan is facing an energy crisis as electricity prices have doubled, causing many people to switch to solar power. High energy costs due to investments in coal-fired plants and reduced subsidies have made electricity unaffordable for many. As a result, Pakistanis have spent more than $1.4 billion on Chinese solar panels this year, cutting their electricity costs by upwards of 70%. However, low-income families who can't afford solar panels are struggling with rising bills. Industries are also feeling the impact with some factories shutting down due to high energy costs. Although solar panel prices have decreased, electricity tariffs are still climbing, creating a challenging situation. Efforts are being made to address these issues by negotiating energy sector debts and promoting alternative energy sources. Meanwhile, provinces like Punjab and Sindh have launched programs to provide free or subsidized solar panels to help households in need. China's workers are facing a worsening crisis as the economy slows down. With reduced demand, companies, including major online retailers, are seeing lower revenues. The housing crisis, now in its fourth year, is worsening the situation. Concerns about a possible downward economic trend are increasing as spending and investment decline, leading to job cuts and pay reductions. This situation is leading many people to leave the country, while birth rates remain stagnant. Mental health issues are on the rise, with increased anxiety and depression amongst workers, particularly in the tech and finance sectors. Many employees feel stuck in their current jobs due to a lack of alternatives. Despite these frustrations, protests remain limited because of tight government control. Zimbabwe's baobab fruit, known as the tree of life, is gaining popularity in global markets due to its nutritional benefits including antioxidants, vitamin C, and essential minerals. Despite its health benefits and growing demand, locals involved in its harvest face challenges like low prices and difficult working conditions. These harvesters earn 17 cents per per kilogram or 2.2 pounds of fruit, while the processed powder sells for significantly higher prices abroad. Due to food scarcity, locals often accept unfair prices And some buyers exploit this by trading small amounts of cornmeal for large quantities of fruit. Efforts are underway to improve conditions for the pickers, with organizations looking to establish partnerships with rural women to set up processing plants. 
The illegal trade in human organs is a growing issue in Africa, affecting many people. Research shows this underground market makes between $840 million and $1.7 billion a year. This problem is notable in countries like Egypt, Libya, South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. Many people, often driven by poverty, sell their organs illegally for little money while recipients pay high prices. The demand for organs is high because there are only 35 authorized transplant centers across Africa. These trafficking networks are well organized, involving medical professionals and criminal groups. There are also concerns activities like baby factories in some regions could be targeted for organ trafficking. Current legal systems struggle to fight against this complex issue. Prisons in the U.S. are rolling out a new initiative allowing inmates to earn high school diplomas using tablets. This initiative is a collaboration with the education technology company and an online high school, making virtual classes available at no cost. Available on thousands of secured devices, these classes offer flexibility, allowing inmates to learn at their own pace. Although the devices are intended to be free for educational use, additional services can be costly, posing challenges for those earning minimal wage. Despite limitations like charging and updating at central kiosks, the program is a positive step in expanding educational access in prisons. This virtual education program is expected to bring significant benefits like reducing repeat offenses and increasing earning potential once released. The U.S. State Department has launched an online system for adult passport renewals, aiming to simplify the process and reduce delays. The system permits passport holders whose documents expired in the past five years or will expire soon to renew online. It excludes children, first-time applicants, and those outside of the U.S. About 5 million U.S. citizens could benefit annually from this improvement. Standard processing fees remain unchanged at $130. Applicants can renew by submitting their documents, photo, and payment securely online at travel.state.gov slash renew online. The department anticipates expanding this program to facilitate renewals for citizens abroad. A controversial UK visa system known as the 10-year route has been called racist as it mostly affects people of color. This system impacts many who can't access quicker immigration pathways due to low income or lack of professional qualifications. Most of the applicants work in low paid jobs like cleaning or caregiving. More than 218,000 people are on this route with 86% from Asian or African countries such as Nigeria, Pakistan, and India. Applicants must renew their status every 30 months paying a fee of 3,850 pounds or about $5,100 each time. Many go into debt to cover these costs and some lose their accumulated years if they renew late. Critics suggest the government shorten the route to five years. The Home Office has not yet responded to these concerns. Also in the UK, the benefit cap is causing concern as it limits financial support for low income and jobless households, leading to hardships. Recent data shows thousands of families, many with children, are trapped in poverty and poor housing due to this policy. The cap was designed to push people into work, but it's led to more homelessness and financial struggles, especially for domestic abuse survivors. These individuals often have to choose between living with an abuser or facing financial ruin, making it hard for them to find secure housing. Critics argue the cap isn't achieving its goals and is worsening poverty, calling for its removal. The housing crisis with high rents and shortages makes it nearly impossible for affected families to find affordable homes, even in social housing. 
There are ongoing calls for reform and urgent government action. Children in Sweden will start school at six years old, starting in 2028. This change aims to improve basic skills in reading, writing, and math. It will replace the current compulsory preschool year for six-year-olds with the mandatory year in primary school, moving away from the traditional play-based learning approach. Critics argue this change goes against research supporting play-based learning for young children. Experts say children benefit most from play and exploration in supported environments. Concerns include potential job losses for preschool teachers and overlooking the developmental needs of six-year-olds. Supporting the plan, supporters of the plan, believe it brings Sweden in line with educational standards across Europe. The proposal also includes more funding for emergency schools, investments in textbooks to reduce screen time, and teacher training. Football season is now. Don't miss the action. Get all of your games in one place. At United TV, don't pay an arm and a leg to keep up with the action. For as little as $15.99 per month, you will get it all. With multi-screen viewing, make this season your winning season. Go to unitedtv.org and sign up today. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. The U.S. Space Force, also known as a front organization for the secret Space Force, has big plans for U.S. citizens. And they are quickly becoming an enemy to the American people as they plan to take over the White House come November. An update on the Middle East as Israel bombs Beirut. And sources say a power plant in Israel was also attacked in the last 24 hours. Now that everyone knows who was behind the exploding phones, could this mean the end of China's political hold in the region? The fall equinox quickly approaches on Sunday. Find out what we can expect. All this and more on today's World Situation Report. Now here's the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan in the office of The Guardian. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Now it's time for today's World Situation Report. It's been a long day, so um, we're going to cover a few things that we've heard uh, that are going on around the world, and might as well just get right to it. Okay, uh, first one, everybody is talking about the fact that the Federal Reserve has lowered interest rates. And they didn't lower them just a little bit. Uh, they lowered them by half a percent, which is a pretty steep bump for the Federal Reserve. Uh, behind the scenes, people that work at the Federal Reserve said they didn't actually do anything because, well, they can't do anything. Uh, but what it does for investors is it, sh it makes for a more attractive bond market, more specifically government bonds and central bank bonds. So uh, people are more apt to buy when interest rates are low. Uh, because they feel that as the market changes, they'll be able to make quite a bit more money. So bottom line, they're trying to sell more government bonds, not just U.S. government, but government bonds all over the world to investors, which is kind of pretty much fallen flat. Uh, it did, however, uh, keep ensure that the, the uh, stock market stayed a little bit higher this, uh, today, um, you know, of course, whatever they say affects the alleged market, uh, and so people respond. Um, either way, it's just a game um, at this point. Uh, the Federal Reserve can't lend any money. Uh, when they say they're going to lower interest rates, what that used to mean for people is that meant that uh, banks and or governments would be able to borrow money uh, from the Federal Reserve at a lower rate. Uh, however, um, they don't have anything to lend at the moment, but they were really hoping they could sell some papers um, <clears throat> because the U.S. government is really struggling at the moment. Uh, so is China and a number of other countries. So there goes that. The other thing that uh, happens, um, has happened, 
as a result of interest rates going lower uh, is it does usually affect oil prices. So between the upheaval uh, that's happening in the Middle East, uh, of course, that always increases oil prices for whatever reason, um, even though most of those countries aren't really involved in, in oil. But they did um, increase oil prices based on the fact that um, you know there were some bombings there, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, when the oil prices go up, that means that the world's largest oil companies make more money off of consumers. It doesn't mean the cost of oil behind the scenes uh, from uh, large refineries and large uh, wells in the Middle East. Uh, you know, all of a sudden it costs more money to do that. Uh, not at all. Does it cost more money for transport? Not at all. So the base root cost of of oil and gas being pumped from wells uh, is of no significance to the market whatsoever, really, other than the fact that they just decide to raise prices for us, the consumer. So uh, when you see the price of oil go up in the markets, yes, it would affect people that do trade in commodities futures somewhat in the futures market. Uh, but most of that has been cornered by the, you know, the likes of BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard and all those people anyway. So, um, you know, I'm not really sure. It looks like a fundraising expedition at this point for the deep state. But I think that they are so disconnected from macro and microeconomics, they don't realize this is not going to raise enough money to achieve their objective. It might raise a small amount of money for a short period of time, but based on all the promises that they're making out there, uh, you know, I'm so sorry, but absolutely not do I see that helping them in any way, shape, or form. It's not good enough for world domination, guys. Sorry. You know, you can try again, maybe another time. So... Uh, in our last news report, we did talk about the exploding phones, pagers, and other electronic devices in the Middle East. Um, uh, that has ceased. Uh, they are not blowing up anymore. Uh, and when countries found out who was responsible, which they all did, um, they found out who was responsible, there was a lot of infighting going on behind the scenes between intelligence agencies, uh, various countries to include China, uh, Japan. There's a lot of arguing going on with the Order of the Black Sun. Uh, there is a lot of talk uh, about mutiny within the U.S. military and a number of other uh, folks. Um, you know, some want to go along with the plans, some don't want to go along with the plans. Uh, I do not think they, they, a lot of the people that were involved were aware uh, that they were going to continue this in many countries to include the United States and to include Israel. So the ones that they sold on this, you know, exploding phone or exploding electronic device scam uh, were not aware that they were planning on doing it in their countries as well. However, there is one group here in the United States that doesn't mind what happens to U.S. citizens. And that is uh, the front known as the Space Force. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Space Force, this is the one that you see on TV, you know, that was uh, started allegedly uh, during the Trump administration. Uh, the Space Force was very, very present in the White House during the Trump administration. And they plan to be very, very present during the next one. So much so, you know, that they would love to have a reason to start martial law in the U.S. And not only in the U.S., but everywhere. Uh, they are the most arrogant of all of the armed forces in the U.S., uh, they participate in programs all over the world, uh, as you may or may not know. I've had many run-ins with them in Greenland. Uh, it used to be called the Thule, uh, as in Thule Society, uh, air base there. Uh, now it's called some strange name that the Space Force renamed it. So 
that is now a Space Force base in Greenland. Uh, there is a lot that happens in Greenland. Uh, matter of fact, during the Trump administration, I don't know how long you've been following me, but uh, during the Trump administration, Trump himself had gone to Greenland. Uh, it was during the time that he announced publicly that he had COVID, but yet he was going to one of these bases hoping to phone uh, some alien race somewhere or something. Well, uh, he had a nice chat with me, uh, was not happy about it. Uh, him and his Space Force friends didn't get what they wanted and they went home. But that doesn't stop the Space Force from still feeling like they have a lot of power by controlling the White House. Um, as you know, there is no more Trump. Um, and there is a lot of fighting going on right now with the organization. And I'm not you know, I sometimes it seems like I'm, you know, talking about Trump in a negative way, and I'm not really talking about Kamala. Um, I have said things in the past because I'm not for anybody at this point. Um, I'm for humanity. Um, and both of these administrations represent dead people. And I'm not really sure that there is an organization like a PETA out there, you know, where they're trying to save the animals, but for dead people, I don't think anybody's trying to save dead people at this point in time. Um, I could be wrong though. Uh, but um, on the one side of it, this is more of a, a worldwide issue uh, because there's a lot of fighting going on uh, between pretty much nearly everybody and the Trump operatives at this moment. Uh, nobody's really wanting to listen to them anymore. Nobody is believing. It, this is in political circles. You know, this is, it doesn't matter if you're on the right or the left, and it doesn't matter what country you're in. This includes Saudi Arabia. This includes Kuwait. Uh, this includes Jordan. Uh, this also includes, in part, Russia. Um, and I say in part because that country is very divided as well. Um, <clears throat> So the infighting there uh, in the uh, lack of trust um, globally because of all the promises this group has been making, plus the Q movement and all of that, and uh, not delivering, uh, they have lost face. So they're going to use their face front organization called the Space Force uh, to say that they're going to be in charge. So now, you know, you're putting another face. This is what the deep state does is, and I've said this so many times, and I'm going to repeat it again because it's so relevant. They just put another face. And what happens when you get a new face, the new face starts taking uh, their new shoes for a walk. So the Space Force has been very active in the last 48 hours, barking out orders everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Uh, they needed oil prices to go up, so they bombed a bunch of citizens in Lebanon. Uh, we've got a little footage here from a, an associate. I told you the GIA is everywhere. So uh, we do have some footage of that. Um, with uh, the bombing that happened there uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, Russia is again talking about nuclear war. Here in the United States, the Space Force is talking behind the scenes of an immediate lockdown uh, once they are, because they consider themselves, once they are reelected uh, as president of the United States. Uh, they are also talking about, and they have been now for oh, a little over, a, a, not quite a month, but of starting a National Guard for the Space Force, which would then give the Space Force permission to act on U.S. soil, um, should the case need to be. <laughs> Isn't this interesting what they're doing? Um, I'm also hearing rumors behind the scenes of vaccines, again, um, mandatory vaccines. I don't know which disease they're associated with, but apparently they're coming out with three new ones uh, that doesn't say what you, you're being vaccinated against. Uh, honestly, I wish there was a vaccine against these people, uh, but there isn't. Uh, you know, and 
maybe some EMPs or something, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, the point is, is that um, this is what they've been doing uh, for the last couple of days now with their new shoes. Uh, they feel that with the Space Force in charge, uh, because they were very present in the White House before, and they did such a bad job um, at that time, that they would be great to put as the front. And of course, they're very loyal to the secret space program that gave them their shoes in the first place, uh, that put them forward. Uh, at the time that they were created, uh, the Secret Space Force was not getting any funding uh, through Black Project lines of the deep state anymore. Uh, so they created it so that they could then siphon money for Black Projects off of the U.S. budget. Now, they forgot there is no such thing at this moment as a U.S. budget, meaning, you know, they're scraping, they're, you know, drug running, they're doing all kinds of things across the border right now, and that is what your U.S. government is being funded with. A lot of drug money, a lot of illegal arms trading, um, a lot of, uh, uh, oh, yeah, a human trafficking, uh, child protective services, uh, a, most all of the money being generated to at least keep the lights on within the government is being generated in this way. They're selling very little bonds at this point. Uh, they just basically severed a lot of relationships in the Middle East. Uh, but they feel that they're still in the running for what they set out to do during the Trump administration with Operation Warp Speed. Uh, they feel that Operation Warp Speed uh, would be um, uh, then amplified with these three new alleged diseases, uh, and they have tried. Um, you know, I must admit, uh, they have tried very hard to infect us with something over the last few days, uh, maybe even a couple of weeks. Uh, so that's what your Space Force is doing. So if you wonder why things are crazy in the United States right now and why all other militaries are all of a sudden reporting to the Space Force people uh, and why we're seeing American activity in Yemen and other areas of the world, uh, why everybody is screaming at everybody, um, it's because the Space Force just tells everybody to sit down, shut up, and do what you're told. Uh, they feel that they have enough backing. Um, they also feel that the Order of the Black Sun, Black Nobility, or Assini family are still very, very powerful in this world, and they were told so. They were also told that a lot of money was going to be coming out by end of business today. I can honestly tell you that that didn't happen. Uh, they are running operations in conjunction with the Space Force at this point at the behest of the Orsini family uh, in Italy. Uh, <clears throat> where, for example, one of the things they did today, they took uh, any company, known or unknown, that had a quantum computer. Uh, that means that they are capable of generating many terahertz uh, some 30,000, 800,000 uh, terahertz. And they are, um, they created what's called a, it's a hacking technique called a border computer. So it's like joining you, uh, your laptop with all of the other laptops in your neighborhood. And then you combine the processing power of each one. And then you have one uh, large computer that would process a lot more than just your laptop would as an individual. So they felt that if they went ahead and connected all these computers at MIT and uh, NNT and Google and other, I mean, there were so many different, uh, you know, they were at Ocrest today and, and a few other locations throughout the world. It wasn't just a U.S. Uh, situation. Um, that they could then break into the Golden Age AI or Alpha or I, I don't even know where they were going. Uh, the system uh, that we have installed, even in human computer networks, has a very hefty defense system. Uh, it is designed to defend and protect, uh, and that is what it did. Uh, so it sent a very large, I'm not going to call it an EMP or an electric, uh, electromagnetic pulse, 
I'm going to call it more of a frequency. Uh, and now none of those people that hooked up their computers to try to hack us are functioning at this moment. So um, no surprise there. Uh, they have also started barking out a lot of orders to all of the other SSP operatives that may be left in this world. Um, that is like Chiron is back, you know, Arasaka I've seen today, Taifong, uh, the medical divisions trying to infect us with something or other. Uh, I've seen in the last few days them try to send through computers a toxoplasmosis, uh, histoplasmosis, um, COVID, cancer, uh, you name it. They would just like us to have it and so that they can then sell these three vaccines. And in the secret meetings I was listening to, I didn't hear what kind of disease they were talking about. Like they didn't actually mention what the vaccines were going to be for. And I don't think they really care what they're for. I think they would like to sell them and make some money. I also think that they would like to try another go with whatever they put in the other ones um, to try to kill more people. So <clears throat> your Space Force uh, is pretty much planning on invading uh, the U.S. I've heard a lot of that. Uh, lockdowns, of course, martial law. You know, then... Uh, it wouldn't be so bad because now they can make the head of the Space Force, you know, your new alleged head of state. Uh, then, of course, it wouldn't matter that Trump is already dead. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk behind the scenes that a lot of people don't want Kamala either. Uh, they, um, they really kind of have made a political mess for their own selves. They really don't have a representative at this point in time that is acceptable uh, to the Ameri both to the American people uh, and to them, of course, because they need to control them like a puppet. But they, you know, this is what happens when you don't have any leadership. Uh, this will be our first election, selection in the U.S., uh, where they haven't had any leadership. Um, a lot of these covens and, you know, these other people and, you know, they definitely ran a tight ship and they had to follow orders to a T. Uh, look what happens when they try to make their own. Um, you know, again, little knowledge is dangerous and that's pretty evident uh, with what's going on here. I mean, lowering interest rate to sell bonds to who? China's told half the world right now that, um, you know, the U.S. is going to crash and that they're going to be taking over. So, you know, there's all these countries they've signed backdoor agreements with for BRICS and BRICS currencies and, and all of these things. You know, there's, I don't know, I've heard 70 to 80 countries that are on board with that. I mean, who's going to buy Fed bonds? Who? I mean... You know, again, I have to say this. I really do. Um, you know, and then, of course, they call me when their hacking doesn't work out or call, you know, some associate of mine somewhere. Uh, and then they try to see if uh, they can lie, cheat, and steal uh, from me and in turn from you. So uh, in the last 24 hours, we've gotten calls from the military and, oh, they're ready to move forward. You know, meanwhile, I'm listening to their new quote unquote leadership and I'm listening to all the things they're planning on doing to American citizens behind the scenes. And I don't know if they just think I'm blonde, I'm dumb, I'm just a woman, I'm just a woman sitting in Durango. But who, who in their right mind would say, yes, I would love to be locked down again. And hey, by the way, could you do it under military guard with National Guard everywhere this time? That would be awesome. Enforce vaccines. Oh, oh, now you're talking my language, right? No, said no one ever. No one ever said that. So uh, no, I've also gotten calls from representatives of the Yakuza uh, looking for funding for Japan because they had also a big bill due today. Um, you know, they're running out of money to run their alleged operations now as the new uh, head of the Black Sun or Black Dragon uh, group. So 
you know, again, I don't know what they're doing, you know, and at this point, I, other than trying to prevent them, like, you know, we don't see any more exploding phones in the Middle East anymore, do we? No, we do not. So uh, that's not an option here that the Space Force is going to be able to do with American citizens either. Um, you know, other than trying to make sure that they don't kill humanity in the process, I honestly don't care. I do not care <laughs> at all uh, what they do. Uh, they can sit there and talk about running operations all they want. I, I mean, I could sit here and watch Google videos of buying a yacht in Ibiza, but that's never going to happen anyway. I mean, I, nor do I want it, but I'm just saying, you know, I don't have billions of dollars to go buy a yacht in Ibiza and a slip that costs millions and hundreds of millions, a, you know, a year or whatever. I, I don't have that. And even if I did, I would, that would be the last thing I would spend it on. But you know, they're living in a fantasy world right now where they think they're going to be able to regain control on a day ending in Y. And one of those days ending in Y, as they are all talking about it behind the scenes, is the fall equinox, which happens to fall the, on this Sunday. So if it's not the full moon before the equinox, it's not the, you know, maybe it's the equinox. Maybe we got our days wrong. So I can tell you they've already been ramping up their operations. Uh, today is the third day uh, since the full moon and um, on the 17th, and they are just going like gangbusters uh, right now. Uh, today, it's just been hacking after hacking after hacking. The Space Force uh, and the Secret Space Force they're just barking out insanely ridiculous orders that even if they had hundreds of billions of dollars would never work. It would never work. It's never going to work. Even if I wasn't doing anything over here, it's still not going to work. You know, they don't know how to run a government. It's abundantly clear, let alone run 200 governments around the world. There is no way that those people are going to achieve that, and that is the most important thing. You, can, you, you know when you're looking at your kids or you're looking at a friend and you know they have this great idea and you just know from your experience with whatever this idea pertains to, that their plan is not going to work. It's not going to end well. You know, some of you, you know, men and women out there probably do that with your spouses too. You know, you probably look at your spouse and go, yeah, that's not going to end well. That's not going to fix the car. That's not going to fix the, you know, <laughs> that's not going to get it done. And you're just looking and you're like, yep, well, we'll just let them do it. And we'll call the plumber later. You know, I'm sure you've had that talk with your spouse before. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that that right there is an extremely positive sign for our future. Uh, it, does it cause disturbances here and there? Yes. Um, do we see this continuing? Yes, I do. I I. I think they're going to go around in circles uh, when this does not work on Sunday, and it will not. There is not a gateway opening. There is not a miraculous reoccurrence of anti-source or uh, Lucifer or somebody that's coming to help them. Uh, there is no money that is going to fall from the sky. There's going to be no renewal of agreements for these people in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there will not be any kind of anything that they're expecting. In fact, I'm expecting quite the opposite over this weekend. So, um, you know, this just gives Source on Source's side, you know, as long as the way is clear and there's nothing those people can do to block the way. This is just old things maybe that would reoccur around the time of an equinox, old space junk, stuff like that. Uh, but honestly, there is nothing that those people can do at this point. Um, and if anything else, uh, you know, they've tried with Northrop Grumman. 
Uh, they were at it yesterday. You know, they're pulling out Mitter Corporation, which is a front or used to be a front for the, what was the Jason Society. Um, yeah, at this point, I don't know. It just looks like a whole lot of hot air over there. Uh, a lot of hot air. Maybe that is the cause of this climate crisis everybody keeps talking about. It's all the hot air coming out of the deep state. Um you know, rather hot air than lockdowns and crazy martial law and all this crazy stuff. Um, but I can tell you, um, yeah, um, I wish them luck uh, all weekend long. I uh, God bless them in their attempts uh, to do something to hack a computer that doesn't even come from this density. You know, that was created in a way that they would never understand. Uh, you know, creating and co-creating with source energy and essence and consciousness and, you know, being able to create that quote unquote positive space junk that we need uh, for hyperconducting of source energy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really, um, I don't know. God bless them. May God bless them the way they blessed all of us. I can say that. And uh, with confidence, <laughs> but um, that's pretty much where where it's sitting uh, today. You know, the news being late is predominantly just because uh, we have too been moving forward. Um, we are working on a lot of things with the marketplace, uh, getting that ready and prepared. Uh, we have begun some testing on the back end for um, sellers and vendor logins uh, there, uh, trying to make it as easy as possible, thoughts of creating some training videos uh, so that if people have never done this before, um, you know, hopefully they'll be able to do it with this marketplace, uh, making sure we're available in every currency, you know, all over the world, uh, we have something in there to do some test transactions, see what the customer experience is like. So we're moving forward on that front. So there's been a lot of things at a time that has been taken up from that. Uh, also, you know, kind of mitigating the middle, the situation in the Middle East, uh, listening to these meetings, which, oh God, I tell you, uh, you know, these meetings are just so full of, egos i mean they're going to need to create ego continent like maybe source can terraform an extra continent on this planet and we can just put them on there because they need a whole continent for the size of their egos to be they need a place for that or maybe there's another planet called planet ego you know like they what was that uh guardians of the galaxy 2 i think it was uh, where someone, uh, some guy had created Planet Ego. Um, maybe there is one of those somewhere. I'll have to ask a source. <laughs> um, anyway, um, that's pretty much uh, what's been happening throughout the day today. You know, the hacking game was fun. Uh, it didn't last very long. They're still trying. Uh, God bless them. Um, still trying to get access. Still trying to reinstall old, old programs. You know. I expect to dance a lot with the uh, with the Space Force and the you know now that they've got new shoes and they think they've got new information which is old information for us um, maybe they need to watch our news I'm not sure um, but yeah that's pretty much uh, the state of affairs as of Friday uh, I'm hoping uh, we have a more pleasant weekend uh, than we were expecting. Uh, you know how they are usually around their um, equinox time, solstice times, you know, all of that type of thing. Uh, I'd say, you know, it's been a little bit off as they try things. It usually doesn't last that long. I know a number of people that have been feeling a little sick. Uh, it's probably because of some frequencies they've been sending out. Uh, when we reverse those frequencies, you know, it's really up to the person at that time. Uh, what I mean by that is, 
if you are emotionally, mentally tired, achy, you know, you feel all the things that you would normal normally feel when you are about to have a cold or a flu, um, I would say, you know, then the average human thinks, oh, I'm getting a cold, I'm getting a flu and responds accordingly, which then brings that into fruition. And now they actually have a physical virus. Uh, without your help, they can't bring those things in. So I've recognized it myself, even in the fact I'm like, oh, here we go again. You know, it's trying to convince me, you know, that I am sniffly or sneezing or something. But in reality, I'm like, no, you know, I, I feel fine. I have plenty of energy. I've been working on 9,000 th different things today. I don't, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not buying into that. Uh, but, you know, it, it does take some time uh, and it will take some time uh, for them to stop pulling out things they know nothing about uh, to try to do things that just don't work. So we'll see. Um, I think it's going to be busy over here for the weekend, but for the most part, I don't expect any major events. Uh, to occur on Sunday, you know, other than, you know, everybody will wake up at Sunday morning, enjoy a cup of coffee, I hope, and maybe go for a walk in nature uh, if it's nice enough where you're at. So enjoy your weekend. Uh, I will see you again on Monday. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. That's also where you'll find our UNN Meme of the Day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. That wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record and share it with us so together we can change the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.